All right, so it looks like uh, we have a full house, so let's get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on uh, how to harness the power of AI with data science, uh, machine learning, and uh, auto AI. My name is Nabil Nazir. I'm a senior account manager at uh, New Comp Analytics, and I will be your host today. We have a great session lined up for you, and we hope that you will find the presentation informative and useful, regardless of where you are in your data and analytics journey. Our hope today is to share our knowledge and best practices around data science and machine learning with you so that your organization can benefit from these. Before I hand over to our speakers, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Um, today's webinar is being recorded. We will be able to share a link with you as, uh, as well as the recording uh, and the presentation slides after the event is complete. We welcome you to revisit the content yourself and share it with uh, colleagues. We also invite uh, your comments and questions. Please look at the questions chat box within the control panel on your screen. If you think of a question for the speakers at any point, uh, just type it in the questions box and I will pose it to our speakers at the end of the presentation. We also have a few panelists uh, from IBM on the line and they might also be answering the questions uh, throughout the presentation. For those of you who are just joining us, uh, welcome. Your speakers today are CT Goweker, uh, Offering Manager for IBM SPSS Modeler, Watson Studio and Machine Learning, and Yin Chen, uh, Offering Manager for Watson Studio, Auto AI and Deep Learning, uh, both from IBM. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have uh, a set of panelists from IBM who will be supporting with the Q&A today. I would like to quickly introduce uh, New Comp Analytics for those uh, who don't know about us. Um, we are a dedicated analytics practice with over hundreds of successful uh, project implementations and satisfied clients across Canada, the United States, and the Caribbean. We are an IBM Platinum business partner and one of the largest IBM partners focused on data and analytics uh, in North America and the Caribbean. We focus on what we call the five pillars of analytics, and those include BI and data visualization, financial planning and analytics, AI and machine learning, uh, data management and governance, and open source analytics. Our team has deep, deep expertise and experience in those five areas. Our service models are flexible to fit your organization. We have a hybrid uh, project approach, uh, the typical client plus consulting team, uh, and this can be managed by you, our client, or by us. We build uh, proof of concepts, where you would share some data or a business case with us and we prove the idea before you make any significant investments in, in software. We aim to be your trusted advisor. We teach uh, clients to think like us, allowing them to build and grow the analytics deployment. Our remote engagement model, uh, especially in such uh, challenging times, um, allows you to have access to our team across North America and the Caribbean and uh, enables us to uh, provide you with more options and faster responses. We do focus a lot on enablement. We help clients get their new initiatives off the ground, uh, whether it's a needs assessment or analytics roadmaps, all the way to end-to-end -end implementation. Our support model is highly flexible. You have the option of selecting prepaid support buckets or get on-demand support. And we support our client uh, environment in multiple ways. Lastly, uh, we have offices uh, across uh, Canada, uh, which includes uh, Markham, Toronto, Calgary, and Montreal. And as I mentioned earlier, we do cover North America and the Caribbean. And one of the things that I'd like to mention before I hand over to our speakers is obviously as of uh, February 2020, uh, earlier this year, we are an authorized uh, reseller for IBM in the Caribbean. So for, and this is gonna be very relevant for the folks uh, who are attending the webinar today from the Caribbean. So with that, um, I'd like to, uh, to hand over the floor to our first speaker, uh, C.D. Goweker. So C.D., I'm going to pass over the, I'm going to pass over the presenter mode to you. Thanks, Nabi. Okay, uh, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can, Siddi. Okay, awesome. Uh, I think it just, uh, it's showing a white screen right now. Can you see yeah, it now? Yeah, that's better, that's better. 
Okay, awesome. Um, hey everyone, um, my name is Siddhi Govaikar, uh, and we also have Yin with us today. Uh, we are both uh, offering managers on Watson Studio and Watson Machine Learning, and uh, both of us are really happy to share some uh, details about our data science offerings, machine learning, and auto AI with you, and we welcome you to this webinar. Uh, so let's get right to it. So this is just a legal disclaimer, um, just saying that, you know, um, the details shared here are based on our current plans and strategy and are subject to change. You can read this more in detail later. Uh, so for the agenda today, uh, first I'll give you uh, an overview of the data science portfolio at IBM. Then we'll look at the details about what's in your desktop. Then Ying will talk about what's in machine learning server and then we'll have the most awaited demo for our award-winning technology for auto AI. And then we'll have Q&A session. So um, this is the AI ladder that we at IBM think an organization generally follows in their AI journey. The data science products we'll talk about today fall in the analyze step of this ladder, which is circled here. Some of these functions can also be done in parallel as well, depending upon the need of the organization. Uh, so now let's look at the data science offerings in detail. So uh, looking at the analyzed rung of the ladder, we have these four offerings that form the data science portfolio. The first offering you see here is the Watson Knowledge Catalog. This is a metadata catalog to organize your data assets and post governance and track quality and lineage of your data. It is really the baseline. And once you have the, uh, your data here, you can move to the build phase to Watson Studio, basically, where you can do data exploration, data preparation, and use different tools for model development. We'll speak more about these in the upcoming slides. After that, you can then move to the right to Watson Machine Learning. Once the models are trained in Watson Studio, you can deploy them in Watson Machine Learning, which provides the infrastructure and resource management that you need for deployment and infrastructure, infrastructure to manage versions of models and capability to retrain models. And finally, we have Watson OpenScale. Uh, this provides monitoring and understanding of the model that you've deployed. It also provides information about the business KPIs and production metrics to understand how it is impacting your business. Now let's look at these uh, three offerings in the build, deploy, and monitor phases in a bit more detail. So IBM Watson Studio is an environment where you build your AI models. It is a collaborative environment where data scientists, data analysts, business analysts can all work together on a project using a tool of their choice. As you can see on the right side here, we have open source tools like Jupyter Notebooks and RStudio. We of course also have SPSS model flows as a part of Watson Studio. And we have other new features like data refinery to visualize data and create ETL pipelines and auto AI, which is an automated machine learning tool, which automates all the steps that a data scientist performs to build a model. We also have decision optimization, which is a part of the prescriptive analytics space of data science. So Watson Studio offers the flexibility to choose between notebooks, visual modeling and automation tools in a single platform that a user in an organization can choose based on their liking and skills. So um, now let's look at Watson Machine Learning. So with Watson Machine Learning, uh, you can deploy and manage your models at scale. You can deploy models embedded into an application or have batch deployments for scoring in batches. Today, we are deploying models that you build in Python or even your data pipelines. Soon, we'll also support the deployment of shiny applications which are built using R. Watson Machine Learning also has different capabilities for model operations, for management and monitoring, like version control, lineage on your models, and automation to improve models over time. Then we have Watson OpenScale. So once you have deployed your models, Watson OpenScale provides monitoring and understanding of these models. Its value is highlighted here. So first, it provides risk validation and monitoring for compliance. Watson OpenScale also helps ensure that models are resilient to changing situations by providing drift detection during runtime 
and in situations where data changes over time, which affects the accuracy after the model has already been deployed. And finally, it helps align model performance with business outcomes to help understand how the metrics are affecting your business KPIs. Now, what are the benefits of this platform? So for our customers, cost savings are important at any time, but especially in an economy where companies are trying to cut down on costs related to resources or infrastructure. So organizations need platforms that adapt to changing requirements quickly and have easy implementation. Watson Studio is easy to learn and supports automation. It offers great return on investment and you can start realizing the benefits within seven months. This, uh, this screenshot here that you see is from a white paper which is published by Forrester. The detailed study is publicly available and the link is also provided for your reference. Now, what are the use cases? The use cases for our platform range across the spectrum of descriptive or inquisitive analytics for insights generation, predictive analytics, as well as prescriptive analytics. Here we are highlighting three categories for the use cases, which are customer experience, risk and fraud, and operations, which are applicable in most industries and are high value use cases for our businesses. All the capabilities within our offerings help us solve these business problems that are displayed here. Now, all the data science use cases that we just saw are implemented with a specific set of steps. The most common steps highlighted here are data understanding, data preparation, modeling, and deployment. All of these can be implemented in model flows within Watson Studio, as well as using open source technologies within Watson Studio and Watson Machine Learning. So that was a portfolio overview. Now let's look at the deployment options. So for here we are showing, we have three deployment options. One is the client server. Uh, then we have cloud pack for data, which is our IBM's um, private cloud offering. And we also have the same uh, deployed on IBM public cloud. Now the, let's look at the client server in detail. So one of the, um, the client portion of the client server deployment model is Watson Studio Desktop. So um, Watson Studio Desktop is a completely on-prem application which runs on your laptop. As mentioned earlier, it is ideal for SPSS modular clients and smaller teams or newer teams that work together on analytic problems. The main benefits include that since you are working on an on-prem tool, you don't need to pay for any cloud services and can enjoy unlimited modeling. Uh, unlike some of our competitors that offer only cloud-based solutions. You can also work offline without the need to be connected to any cloud environment. Easy installs on Windows and Mac that you can do by yourself. And as you can keep all your data and all your compute on-prem, you can adhere to the data science, uh, security, and governance requirements. Now let's take a deeper look at some of the key features that Watson Studio Desktop offers. So first is the SPSS model of flows. This is the modernization or evolution of the classic standalone SPSS model. It has the same functionality and same runtime as SPSS. And uh, we have it with an improved user experience while still maintaining the classic way of building models. With model of flows, there is absolutely no coding required. The visual drag and drop interface enables non-coders or those who do not want to code start their analytics projects with improved efficiency and with a lower or flatter learning curve as opposed to Python or R. Another feature is data refinery. It helps you do data preparation and build ETL pipelines. You can also do data visualization and data profiling all without the need to code. You can also save these pipelines and repeat all the transformations later on a regular basis or as needed. Uh, other top level features are shown here. We have Python 3 Jupyter Notebooks included in Watson Studio Desktop. This is the IDE for Python, which is preferred by majority of data scientists. This feature is most useful for the coders or the data scientists in teams who want a more programmatic approach to analytics and the ability to use the latest packages or functionality in open source. Next, we also have connections. 
even if uh, Watson's Serial Desktop sits locally on your machine, it can connect to remote databases. So you're not limited to use only the local flat files. We have over 40 connections to databases like BigQuery, Snowflake, and a lot of other modern data databases, and we continue to add more. Finally, we have text analytics. From a lot of our users, we have heard that text analytics is a very sort of the feature in SPSS model. This really sets, sets us apart from a lot of our competitors. This is integrated with an SPSS model of flows within Watson Studio. It offers a similar fast and easy drag and drop approach to analyze unstructured data and generate insights in a much more efficient way. Now, um, Yin will talk about Watson Machine Learning Server. Um, uh, Nabil, can you make Yin the presenter? Yeah, so I've made, uh, I just changed the presenter mode to Yin now. You're not the presenter, Yin. Thank you, Divya. Uh, thank you, CD. Um, can everybody see my screen well? Yes, we can. Awesome. Hey, everybody. This is Yin. I'm the offering manager for um, Auto AI. And uh, today I'm going to cover the Watson Machine Learning Server and explain what it is and then why we need it. Um, if you're looking at a slide on the right hand side, um, so um, CD has covered the Watson Studio desktop part and then um, there is another requirement from like client that say, okay, I'm okay with all the model building part in Watson Studio desktop. And then the next step is that I want to, um, sometimes I want to offload my training to a much uh, larger compute cluster uh, for a more computational intensive workload. Then they will need a, a Watson Machine Learning server for that purpose. And also uh, when people are, building models and then they want to um, deploy the model assets and manage in a um, very st stable way. And then you will need Watson Machine Learning Server as well to, uh, to help the team to govern and manage a uh, different model asset together with all the uh, training assets as well. And also um, user can do all the model operations, for example, update the model and delete the model if that's not uh, up, to, up to date anymore. And also, it's um, we can make the process accountable. We can figure out like who is building that model and when um, the model is built if that's still relevant. And then, so there's a bunch of um, model management and governance that you can do uh, through Watson Machine Learning Server. And looking at the right hand, uh, left hand side, and there's uh, a more uh, detailed description of each of the use cases that I just covered. Um, and then, just to summarize, it's you can like pushed compute um, for the data for a uh, lightweight scaling. Um, and then also we can uh, use Watson Machine Learning Server to, um, to use it as a data science repository and framework for model operations. And um, finally, you can deploy an, any analytic servers created in Watson Studio, and desktop, and other open source tools together uh, managed by Watson Machine Learning Server as well. With that, um, Let's take a deeper look at the um, feature highlights of Watson Machine Learning Server. So the first one is the um, auto AI experiment. So uh, starting from Watson Machine Learning Server 2.0, um, auto AI will be part of um, the part of the Watson Studio Desktop UI, and then from that Watson Studio Desktop, you can offload the auto AI experiment training to Watson Machine Learning Server because auto AI uh, sometimes can be uh, computational intensive. So you would like to have a larger cluster um, work as a server for that workload. And the second feature is the virtual machine installation. Um, this is also an improvement that um, after we collect feedback from clients saying that uh, virtual machine learning, can, uh, virtual mach uh, machine installation can help 95% um, of the use cases uh, make it the experience much better. And also um, the third uh, enhancement is that we now support larger environment with uh, more than 32 vCPU so that um, you can support a much larger team and much larger workload right now. And then we also expanded um, our batch deployment support that covers both the IBM framework as well as open source framework as well. And of course, auto AI model is also supported there because what auto AI generated, it's um, it's also open source model as well. And finally, uh, 
Watson Machine Learning Server is enterprise ready. So it allows users to back up and restore the server uh, just in case of any incidents. And um, to give a summary of what user can achieve with Watson Studio Desktop together with Watson Machine Learning Server, um, here's a graph. So on, um, on top left, you see that people use Watson Studio Desktop to provide data analysts and modeling building and offline to um, on your PCs and Mac so that you can use it without internet and run it on your laptop, uh, make it very flexible. Um, and then you can also connect to Watson Machine Learning Server because it provides an ability to um, deploy the model you build on desktop uh, from either notebook, let's say through any open source framework or using SP as a model as well. And of course, uh, AutoAI is part of the model we support. And um, on the bottom, then you see that how a different persona would use um, Watson Studio Desktop together with Watson Machine Learning Server. Right. So you can use a client, you can use open source notebook, you can use SP as a modeler, and Watson Machine Learning Server support all these kind of workflow. And um, together, you know, they provide a very easy to install and manage platform for end-to-end -end, uh, predictive analytics. Um, with that, I will um, jump to an auto AI demo uh, with the use case today is um, predictive effect of sales promotion. So I will switch to my browser. And I will use the, the data here uh, just to give a little bit of context of what I'm, I'm doing and what you can get from this demo. So this is this scenario is imagine that um, this is the data from uh, a digital sales team. And then they have historical data about uh, different, different class of products as a confections and then also um, discount level and whether that promotion is done on holiday. So basically it's a historical promotion and sales data um, collected together um, that maintained by the uh, digital sales team. And then they, uh, with this information, they observe and calculated the sales increase after the sales promotion. That will be the increase column. So that's the column we try to, uh, basically the digital sales team trying to build a model to um, predict like the future um, increase in sales given the promotion so that they can uh, understand better like what would be, uh, let's say for example, the main uh, factor to impact the sales uh, increase or if anything they just, anything they can do better um, given the model prediction. So basically that's the task. And then let's uh, go back to the project itself. So this is the um, project view of um, auto AI, and then it's also the same view that you will see in uh, Watson Studio Desktop, or oh, very similar, because this is, as a disclaimer, this is on uh, Watson Studio Cloud, but it's it's very um, similar to what you will see in Watson Studio Desktop and Watson Machine Learning Server uh, coming in um, Q3. So, and then you see that in this uh, project view, you um, everybody see the data sets aligned together and also all the auto AI experiment. And then without further um, spending time on explaining the, uh, the whole project view, I will start the auto experiment using the data I just described. Um, the way to do that is click the add to project on the top right and then click the auto experiment. And then I will name this to predict sales promotion effect. And then I click create on the bottom right. And then I select from the project um, using the sales uh, impact data that I'm using. So since we know that it's the sales increase column that we try to predict, I will just select that column. And then, so at this moment, um, AutoAI has already picked the um, prediction type as regression and the optimized metric to be RMSE, which is like the, you can think of it as uh, um, the average um, difference between what you predict and what's the actual 
increase in sales. And um, you can, of course, change it, change the op optimized metric based on the business uh, requirement in experiment settings. Um, but if you, you, you're happy with the default value, you can just go ahead and, and, and click run experiment without touching anything because AutoRare has um, all the things uh, set up as default value for you as well. But uh, just for um, showcase how flexible user can be with AutoRare, I would just click the experiment settings anyway and then just to show uh, what things user can tweak. Uh, first, the thing is that user can tweak how they want to subsample if in case they have very large data, right? But they just want to start small and try out um, auto AI. And then um, you can also tweak the training data and uh, test data split, how much, uh, how much you want to use for training, how much you want to use for test. And of course, you can um, select uh, which column you want to use for prediction. If you don't pick anything, that AutoAI will pick every every column in the data set. But sometimes you feel like some some columns shouldn't be included because that's that cannot be known at the prediction time, right? Then you just deselect it uh, just to prevent that data leakage. And that's totally up to the user, and they have the full control um, of what column to be included. And then the second part a user can tweak is the prediction, uh, because sometimes like user uh, Although I detect that the column is uh, numerical with a lot of uh, numbers, uh, but you know, by some definition in your business, it might be actually a multi-class classification, right? So you can always force IB, uh, force auto AI to use multi-class classification instead of regression in that case. Um, and also uh, for the optimized metric, uh, auto AI has a default, which is uh, um, IMSE uh, as a recommended. But if, let's say, mean absolute error make more sense to your business, um, then you can choose that as well. And of course, we have explanation for each of the metrics here. Um, and then the next thing to, um, to tweak is the algorithm to include. So for regression, we have eight different algorithms to choose from. Let's say in your business, you prefer a more explainable algorithm. Um, like decision tree or logistic regression or linear regression, then you can choose that over a more complicated, uh, let's say gradient boosting regressor, right? Because uh, sometimes explainability, it's uh, required by regulation in your industry. And you are, um, you know, you're restricted to use certain um, number of algorithms that consider explainable by the regulation. So that's, this is where you can uh, constrain auto as well to let them let all the way only uh, choose from this algorithm and do hyperparameter optimization for you. And you can also um, tweak how many out different algorithms you want auto AI to keep in the end so that it won't spend too much uh, computational resources if you only want to keep the best algorithm. So, and that summarizes that uh, the things that you can tweak in experiment settings. And then because I am happy with the default, I don't need to tweak anything. Um, as like, if I'm a business user, um, I just go ahead and click run experiment. And once you click that, and auto AI will just get the resources. Uh, for example, in the what's machine learning server use cases, like it will try to um, get the resources in that cluster and then offload the auto AI training um, to that more powerful machine instead of your local um, desktop or laptop. And then you see on the right hand side, also that gives a, a kind of a live update of what is happening right now. So right now it's starting the other experiment to try to um, get the data. And then in the middle as well, um, you see um, it's trying to connect to uh, the server, what's machine learning server. And then um, it, once it has any updates, it will try to um, show in both the right hand side as text and also middle um, as kind of a UI graph showing what's happening. And then you can also um, switch between, uh, switch the view between the progress map versus uh, um, a relational map. So this is the progress map. You see that's reading, reads the data, and then you can swap back to the relation uh, map. Here you see that it starts to split the data. 90% um, goes into training, 10% goes to holdout. And um, 
Okay, so right now it's selecting the algorithm. You see on the right hand side it has updating. I'm not sure it's too small, but I can make it larger for people to read. Um, on the right hand side, see that it's doing model selection right now. And then uh, if you, you can view the full log, see what's happening uh, at what time. Right? It, it, it's just trying to, we try to be fully transparent uh, with the auto react process. And now you see that um, AutoAI has already come up with the first model uh, in the pipeline leaderboard with the uh, our um, optimized metric RMSE to be seven something. And then to understand more about um, this algorithm, then you can expand it. And then you see that the feature importance on the right hand side, and then also um, cross validation scores and holdout scores. So um, if you have multiple uh, pipelines, that you can compare different different pipelines together. So um, for the benefit of the time, I will switch to an already completed um, auto experiment with uh, more, much more um, pipelines already trained. But you see, you, you can see that it auto runs it pretty quick. Uh, uh, for the benefit of time, I will try to switch to already completed one. So. Okay, so this one is already completed. <clears throat> yep. So, for example, um, in this pipeline leaderboard, which is on the same data, and you're able to um, select the pipeline that fits your business need. For example, um, you see in a pipeline comparison. So, we uh, besides the optimized metric you ask AutoAI to choose, you can also um, filter on other metric that makes sense to your business. For example, let's say the other metric is mean absolute error, and then you can uh, filter out for a certain range. And then let's say the other um, more important like feature is the mean square error, then you can also filter it so that you will end up okay saying these two um, are like satisfy your need and then because the, the optimized metric this one is better then you can uh, pick this one as um, the one you use and then so that's the that's the ui that we try to um, make it easier for user to be able to understand better of the algorithm and also understand what's happening in either the feature transformations so let's say for example uh, for this gradient boosting regressor, it has to do uh, transformations using PCA for all of the features. And then if you look at another pipeline, we use different technique. For example, uh, let's say I use a ridge uh, regression as the model, and then the feature transformation is showing that it's doing different transformations for uh, different features. For example, plus cell, it's using tangent, and then there's log and tangent kind of transformations. And so that's the explainability part, uh, like on the model side itself, right? It, um, it helps understand the metric and the, um, and the feature importance and the transformation as well. And then user can save um, this pipeline as either model or notebook, right? So if I am a business uh, user, I will just use model because I just want to get the prediction to understand like how um, auto AI model help me to predict the future value so i just go ahead and save as a model and then with that model being saved it's in the same project that everybody uh share the same view and then you can go ahead and deploy the model let's say i want to say this is uh predict predict sales uh, impact so I once i deploy it and it's a web service it will be hosted in what's machine learning 24 seven uh, with a scoring endpoint. So also for the benefit of time, I will try to show like what's an already deployed uh, model look like. So you see on um, the left hand side is that you can input the uh, prediction data that I just showed that let's say for example, the product class is confection and discount 0 0.1 and the holiday is yes. And then single pack uh, size is single. The other I assume it's like empty data. And on the right hand side, you see this is the prediction it generated as a JSON format. So this is coming from the scoring endpoint. 
that um, your um, app developers can help to build a real-time report for you, or you can, let's say, um, do a batch deployment as well, just using a new bunch of data to get the prediction um, data back and as in, for example, in CSV file. So you can do it in, in several different ways and for you to get predictions. And yeah, just to mention that this is the scoring endpoint that you can hand it over to your app team um, or DevOps team just to, to uh, make a live dashboard for you. Or you can use it like, you can also use Auto AI to, to do batch deployment to get prediction as well. Um, that's for the business user. Also, if you have data scientists in your team and then you try to understand better of the, what, what exactly uh, the steps in the Auto AI model, you can choose to um, download the model as uh, download the pipeline as notebook. So in that way, you'll be, uh, you'll be able to see the fully transparent version of the model in scikit-learn format. So I'll just showcase uh, this notebook, but also for the benefit of time, I will switch to an already uh, created notebook, also generated from AutoAI as well. Okay, and then, so if you look at this, is uh, this notebook? It has, um, it has the exact code that explain the model. Let me just move down because there's many values to be filled in. Um, so you see, there's uh, some of the missing data handling um, of auto AI and how um, different categorical value is encoded in auto AI. So these are, are kind of in the data pre-processing step and as well as uh, feature engineering step as well. So you see it has um, the code level detail covering like every step in this auto AI model. Um, so with this notebook, um, IBM Auto AI is not vendor locking you to only run only inside IBM environment, right? So you can run this notebook outside of IBM environment in your desktop or in third party cloud provider, for example, AWS, GCP, um, Azure. Um, so we're not vendor locking you because what Auto AI model generated is um, open source like scikit-learn format it's just shown here. And we also provide some kind of um, handy function to visualize the pipeline model here. For example, you see that we have a column selector, NumPy um, column selector, compressed strings, and different handling of um, the data and the feature in different staff, and in the end, using the rich regression um, as the final algorithms. And uh, of course, this is, uh, has been already optimized for their hyperparameters. And also, it has a very good integration with the deployment service in Watson Machine Learning. So you see, this is um, this is the model train model, and then you can uh, deploy the model through um, also machine learning client, and then it's it's very easy uh, and integrated experience uh, because everything is wound up from training to deployment on the uh, on the SDK level. So if you're a data scientist, and this is this will make your life easier. Uh, you don't need to like move your data here and there because it, everything can be done in one notebook and then you can decide whether you want to deploy it or not. So um, with that, I think that concludes uh, my demo of Auto AI. And I think in short summary, um, Auto AI is very friendly tool to both um, business analysts as well as uh, data scientists who want to, to get some inside from auto AI. And then anybody can use it. Um, and because auto AI is, uh, is one of the tools in Watson Studio, so everybody can share the same view, everybody can contribute it to either deployment or evaluate the model. And um, you, can, you can view it at different level of uh, explainability. And then also uh, we have integration with OpenScale as well, which is, um, our expert service in, in model explainability, then you can model the model drift and data drift and then also fairness of the model. So that, um, that's where, where um, uh, open scale comes into play once you deploy the model in, uh, of auto AI. So that's after deployment uh, monitoring and 
um, explainability. So um, I will stop sharing and then switch to Q&A session to answer any questions that uh, the audience might have. Thanks very much, uh, Yin, uh, for a great demo. And once again, thank you very much, CD, uh, for a great presentation and demo. Uh, we do have one question uh, that came up, and I will read it to, to you guys. And uh, uh, whoever, whichever one from you guys would just uh, answer the question, that would be great. So the question that we have is, uh, is Watson able to analyze uh, qualitative data? Uh, yeah, you mean like unstructured data, right? So we have text analytics which can do that in Watson Studio. Perfect. Or do you mean like uh, categorical data which can be used as uh, your variables in any of the models that you can create? I think I believe the, the attendee is obviously is referring to more unstructured data. So I think the, the answer to that is obviously the text analytics uh, component, which you actually mentioned in Watson Studio. So I believe that would uh, cater for um, for the qualitative uh, uh, data aspect of things. Right. I yeah. think that should answer the question. Yep. Yeah. And also, I want to mention that uh, for Watson, like for image data, right, for example, we have Watson API. Um, that can handle like if you want to extract some of the entities from image and also for text data you want to do a kind of sentiment uh, analysis um, that Watson has API provided as well. So they are all uh, integrated part uh, in Cloud Path for data and it's not necessarily inside Watson Studio but Watson Studio has integration with those services as well. Perfect, thank you very much Yen. Um, I don't believe we have any other questions uh, for today. So that brings us uh, to the end of today's webinar. So thank you everyone for joining us and uh, stay safe.